These are the top 10 things you must know before moving to San Diego in 2024. I'm Jamie Lennon, a local realtor who teaches you everything there is to know about living in San Diego. If you're looking to buy or sell anywhere in the greater San Diego region, as always, you can call, text, or email me anytime. All my contact information can be found in the description below. San Diego is big. It's a city that embraces diversity spreading across multiple neighborhoods. In the city of San Diego, there are 52 different neighborhoods with a population of about 1.4 million residents, making it the second largest city in California by population and eighth largest city in the U.S. Its landscape is vast, offering its residents a wide range of lifestyles. One example are the coastal communities, each having their own unique style and charm with one thing in common, and that's having the ocean at your back door. You're also gonna experience a cooler climate in these communities, and they tend to be busier, especially during peak season. Then venturing further inland, you'll find enclaves of luxury estates and equestrian properties, which cater to those seeking more space and more privacy. And for those that are looking to live that high rise condo lifestyle, living somewhere where everything that you need is going to be walkable to you. And then of course, you're gonna to wanna to check out the downtown area and bonus it's on the harbor so water views are plentiful no matter if you're someone who wants to live somewhere walkable or away from the crowds or away from people for that matter maybe you like living by the beach or near a lake up in the mountains or in a quiet suburb all of the above can be achieved here wanting to relocate is only half the plan so we got to sort out what the job market looks like. There have been recent reports naming San Diego the most expensive city in the U.S. And it's not because the cost to purchase a home is higher because New York, San Francisco and Silicon Valley definitely have San Diego beat. But rather, it's because wages have not kept up with the cost for housing. Even so, San Diego does have good, high paying jobs here, especially in biotech and the life science sector. You also have healthcare, which is going to be a vital sector for the city. And then there's finance and, of course, tourism. Hospitality jobs are plentiful here. I can see somebody working in a position in hospitality or in a position to receive tips doing really well in a city like San Diego. And we cannot forget about tech jobs. No, it's no Silicon Valley, but tech has arrived in San Diego and it's only getting better. We also have Apple that has a plan of hiring an additional 5,000 workers over the next three years, which will have a huge positive impact on the job market here in San Diego. San Diego is a very desirable city to live in, but with that comes a higher cost for living. And the primary measure that's used to determine the cost of living in San Diego is the cost for housing. But the city's desirable location and limited real estate has driven housing costs upwards, making rent and homeownership relatively high. Mm, okay. It's just high. In fact, the average price to purchase a single family home in San Diego is at a million dollars. But that is not the most expensive place to buy a home, especially when you're comparing to New York City, San Francisco, even Los Angeles. So it's not the most expensive, but it is undoubtedly the best place to live. When it comes to utilities, groceries, and transportation, prices are on par with the state's average, but I do wanna mention utilities. So those babies have gone up 5% since 2022, and they are going to increase an additional 3% per year until 2026. This is where a fireplace really comes in handy. And I know not a lot of San Diego residents are looking for a home with a fireplace, but when you start comparing your gas bill every winter, fireplace is looking like a pretty good idea. Plus, ambiance. When looking to move here for the first time, it's so important to balance your expectations with your financial reality, especially if you're moving here from out of state because everything, and I mean everything, is going to cost more here. 
Now, whether you're somebody who likes the allure of an older home, to be able to restore it and make it your own while also preserving a piece of history, or maybe you want a no fuss house, meaning something that's all modern with updated electrical and plumbing without having the fear of replacing the foundation due to a hundred year old tree with overgrown roots. Yeah, we got it all. Older homes are all over San Diego, but you'll find the majority of them in the metro and the coastal areas in San Diego. And then you have historic districts. So these are neighborhoods that were established in 1906 and 1908. And those you'll find in Mission Hills, North Park, Normal Heights. And that's where you're gonna find all craftsman style, Victorian style, Spanish revival homes. Now the oldest home in San Diego is located in the gas lamp district and that is the Davis Horton house, but it's since been turned into a museum. But another historical property, one of the oldest built in 1887 is located right here in Mission Hills on Orizaba Street. An older home has its charm, but it also has its share of deal breakers, mainly because it's going to require more maintenance and it's going to lack those modern amenities that we're used to having today. But it offers a piece of history and craftsmanship. Now, new homes, on the other hand, they're typically going to be built with open floor plans and smart technology, and they're great for people that are looking for a low maintenance type of home. New construction exploded in the late 90s and early 2000s. So when looking for newer homes, you're going to find a lot of master plan communities up in North County. There's 4S Ranch, Del Sur, Sabre Springs, Scripps Ranch, Carmel Valley, and a new community in Poway called The Farm. These homes are built by Leonard and they are on their last selling phase. So if you want any information on this community, just go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I'll send you over all the details. So most of us are going to love the charm of an older home, but the convenience of having modern amenities with new construction is appealing as well. But the good thing is San Diego has it all. You just have to know where to focus your search. Purchasing a home in San Diego amidst its natural beauty often involves a crucial consideration, obtaining fire insurance. Listen, fire insurance is an essential component of home ownership when looking to buy a property in California. It's crucial to understand the impact of a potential fire risk to your property, but also be aware that not all homes are subject to being located in a high fire hazard zone. So this is not going to apply to all homeowners. When purchasing a home, you're going to uncover whether or not this property is located in a high fire hazard zone. The same is gonna go for whether or not it's located on a fault line or in a potential flood zone. Now here's the kicker. In recent years, insurance companies have become more cautious per se, and they have made it more difficult for homeowners to obtain homeowners insurance, especially if the property is located in a high fire risk area. So much so that they started rejecting current policyholders, leaving homeowners to scramble to try to find another insurance company to get coverage. To put it lightly, it's BS. Along with fire insurance, a new bill requires homeowners to include a defensible space of 100 feet around the property. This is for protection of your home and also to provide a safe area for firefighters. And if you want more information on protecting your home located in a high fire area, check out fire.ca.gov. San Diego is deeply rooted in military history, with the city having a long-standing relationship with the military dating back to 1847. Today, you're gonna find Marine bases up in Oceanside at Camp Pendleton, and then there's also the Miramar Air Station. There's, of course, the Navy, the U.S. Coast Guards here as well. There are many memorials and museums in honor of the armed forces, but it also contributes significantly to our local economy through defense contracts and a plethora of job opportunities. So next time you see a man or woman in uniform, make sure you thank them for their service. Hey, San Diego is beautiful, but it's not without its challenges, especially when it comes to traffic. Traffic here is very much centered around commuter time. So think 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then you have peak season in the summertime when everybody's coming to the beaches. But aside from that, if you're just driving, you know, from Carlsbad to San Diego on a Tuesday at noon, you shouldn't hit any traffic unless, of course, there's an accident. But just know 
commuter times, it's going to be gridlocked, and just plan accordingly. All right, it's time to be real. Yes, San Diego does in fact have the best weather. But contrary to popular belief, it is not always sunny in San Diego. While most days are mild and sunny, it does experience a fair share of diverse weather throughout the year. For starters, it's really going to depend on where you live. Inland is going to have the more extreme weather in terms of getting hotter in the summer and colder in the winter when comparing to the beach communities. And I'm gonna take it a step further and say that La Jolla tends to be the coldest in my experience. You can be in downtown on San Diego and it can be blue skies and 75 and then you head up 15 minutes to get to La Jolla and it can be 65 degrees and gray and overcast especially in the summertime but that's not to say that La Jolla is not beautiful because La Jolla has some of the most spectacular days. The sunniest days are actually in the winter time. And then you have spring and summer, which has that marine layer and that coastal fog. In the summertime, it usually tapers off by the afternoon. But in the springtime, this is where we get the most gray days, where there will be consecutive weeks where the sun never makes an appearance. Winters are very mild. So you're looking at an average temperature of high 50s to low to mid 60s up until March where it gets nice and 70 degrees again. And we're in November. No matter your interests, you're going to find it here. Just like you find in most tourist areas, there's tons to do here. So you have everything that revolves around the ocean and the bay, so all water activities and things that you would do near the water. There's theme parks throughout the county, and there's also a huge food scene here. So there's always gonna be new restaurants popping up. San Diego is also the most biologically rich county in the US. So nature lovers, you're gonna get to enjoy exploring new hiking trails, parks, and botanical gardens. There's really something for everyone. So whether you're looking for an activity, something fun to do with the family, or you're living out your college years, it's for everybody. Number 10 is my least favorite, but do you see this elephant? All right, so this really isn't just San Diego specific, but rather the entire state of California, because the tax base is going to be the same down in San Diego as it is going to be in Northern California. California has amazing qualities. And for the most part, people who live here or relocate here, they do so because the benefits can outweigh the huge indent to our pockets. Even so, the high taxes in California can be a massive deal breaker because we have the highest in the US highest state income tax, sales tax, gas tax, and property taxes. Now property tax base is pretty low. It's at 1%, but what makes it so high are how high home prices are. So on a million dollar home, you're going to be paying an additional $10,000 a year in property taxes. Listen, the high taxes in California, they could be challenging, but they also contribute to the state's resources and amenities. Supposedly. All I gotta say is whenever I drive out of state, Arizona, Nevada, the first thing I recognize are how smooth those roads are. Oh, wait a minute, sunshine tax. Silly me, I'm paying for good weather, not for smooth roads. Just know that when you're looking to move here, the high taxes underscore the need for really good financial planning. And just understanding the state's tax nuances is gonna help you better prepare and plan accordingly for both personal and business finances. All right, that is what I got for you today. And if you feel that I missed something or if you just want more information on something, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let's chat. And if you are looking to move out to the best in the West, know that you can give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email anytime because we want to help you make a smooth move when the time is right. And I'm going to leave you the same way I always do friends and that is to stay classy, San Diego.